started. So that's the topic that we're going to explore together. And let's have some fun. Even if you know a lot about gamification and maybe this webinar doesn't give you uh, new information or uh, not as much as you want, let's at least have some fun. And if you don't know much about gamification, I hope this webinar will give you a better understanding of what it is and how you can implement it if you choose to do so. And I guess that's an important part of our conversation. Maybe gamification is not for everyone, and that's OK. But let's try and understand how it works and what it is first. Uh, here you have my email. You can send me an email if you have any questions about the presentation, if you need any help. And you can also use the other link, gg.gg slash Rafael Rodriguez, to access my blog. I have just started a blog because of this webinar. I felt this inspiration to change my life. I decided to finally start writing about ELT, start sharing more practical tips. I've been a teacher for about 15 years, so there are some things that I can share. And I like technology a lot, I like games a lot, so maybe I can share some tips. So after this webinar, just give me like five minutes and you will find this presentation there, and hopefully in the future you'll find other materials too. Uh, so before we continue, can you just say hi in the chat? Where are you from? I hear, I can see some messages already. Some people are posting. So Alagoa, São Paulo, Bahia, Uberaba. That's amazing, guys. So many different states, many different places. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, before this pandemic, <laughs> this webinar was actually a workshop so yeah, the, there are advantages and disadvantages, right? The disadvantage is that I cannot see you. I'd love to see your faces and interact with you directly, but the advantage is that I can talk and interact with people from all over the country, maybe even different countries, who knows? So thank you very much for being here. And again, I'm looking at the chat. So if you have questions, please, please uh, post your questions. There is a question already. Uh, if this webinar is in English? And the answer is yes. Uh, if you need some help later, I can maybe uh, post or give you some tips that you can find in Portuguese, but the webinar is in English. Thank you uh, for your question. So let's get started. I'd like to start with a very, very simple question, a nice breaker perhaps. If you were a game, which one would you be and why? So I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. When you're ready, type in the chat. If you were a game, which game would you be and why would you be this game? Remember to explain why. Pokemon. Why Pokemon? Batman. Hmm. The Sims. I like this answer a lot. So the Sims, because I love planning my life. That's interesting. Sonic, I'd like to be as fast as possible. <laughs> Minecraft, Alex Kidd. I have a little trauma, guys. When I was a child, my nickname was Alex Kidd because my head was too large for my body. So I don't like talking about that, okay? Don't uh, joke about that. It's a sensitive issue for me. <laughs> but uh, I would say that if I were a game, I'd probably be, probably be poker. Uh, I have this reputation. My friends usually accuse me of stirring things up when I'm playing any game with them because I like lying, I like creating this intrigue. So I guess that's what poker is about in a way, right? Trying to convince people that you know something, that you have something, maybe when that's not true. But more seriously, I guess poker is an easy game to understand, but maybe a very difficult or a complex game to master. And I think I like to see myself that way too. I, I'm easy to understand, but I'm not shallow. <laughs> so yeah, that's my choice. So thank you very much for your contribution. Some people said that you're not familiar with any of those games. And that's fine too. You don't have to be. I only chose video games here or computer games, but there are many other types of games. Maybe you're interested in more traditional games, and that's fine too. Or maybe you're not interested at all. Uh, maybe you don't like games. And that's OK. You don't have to like games. But I think it's important for us to understand why people like games and what they like about them. Uh, on that note, I'd like to show you four situations. There are four situations here. I would like you to think about the situations and maybe ask yourselves, have you ever been this teacher? Have you ever been in this situation? 
So the first one is uh, the teacher uses board games to teach her students useful speaking skills. So for example, negotiating in English. Have you ever been this teacher in the first situation? Situation number two, at the end of each lesson, the teacher lets her students relax and play their favorite mobile games. I'm in front of the questions. I don't know how to change the camera. Can you see the questions, guys? Can you see my slide? Can you type this in the chat? Apparently, my camera is blocking the questions, so many people can see uh, the information. So that's great. That's amazing. So that's situation number two. Situation number three. When teaching kids, the teacher plays Duck, Duck, Goose so that her learners have some fun. So that's the third situation there. And finally, situation number four. To recap vocabulary, the teacher starts the lesson with guess the word games, such as taboo. So have you ever been uh, any of the teacher, any of the teachers, <laughs> or have you ever done any of the things that you can uh, see on the slide? Some of them, all of them, situation four, the first, taboo. That's great. So uh, all the situations have something in common, all of them, OK? So what do all of these situations have in common? Are we talking about gamification in these situations? So games, playing games, is this gamification? No. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure, yes or no. <laughs> so using games is not the same as uh, gamification, guys, or gamifying courses, gamifying lessons. And I think this is an important distinction for us to consider. Uh, many people have already used games and maybe use games all the time in their lessons, but that doesn't mean that the lesson or the course is gamified. Uh, if you look at the first example here, using board games to teach uh, speaking skills, this is very effective. This could work very well, but this is not gamification. This would be an example of game-based learning, for example, or GBL, which is another topic, maybe a topic for another webinar another day. Uh, so today we are not talking about real games being used in the classroom. Uh, we are not talking about uh, maybe games that are adapted to classroom use. We're talking about something else. So maybe we can start, guys, by talking about what is not gamification, OK? So what is not gamification? Well, gamification is not just fun. Gamification can be fun, and we hope that it's fun, but it's not just fun. So gamification goes beyond fun. It's more than that. Gamification is not just simulation. Again, it may involve simulation. In some gamified courses or lessons, there is this possibility that gamification can uh, take place or be used, but that's not just what gamification is about. It is not restricted to any field. So if we talk about gamification, we are not just talking about education. We are talking about a rationale, and I'm sort of spoiling things a little. <laughs> We're thinking about a mindset that is not restricted to any fields. It's not about uh, game if you, it's not about education or ELT necessarily. So it's broader than that. Gamification is not a competition. Let that sink in. So lots of people think their courses are gamified because there is a competition. It's not a competition. Maybe it will have a competition. Maybe uh, having this competition is part of a possibility, but that's not what gamification is about. Gamification is not about points and leaderboards. Again, maybe your model will have points and leaderboards, but that's not what gamification is. It doesn't have to be. You can have a gamified course or a gamified lesson without any points, without any leaderboard. Gamification is not designed for youngsters only. So some people think that, okay, games are for children, gamification is for children. So let me correct you, games are not for children. I love games. There are different types of games. And again, I'm spoiling this webinar a little bit. <laughs> but there are different types of games and different types of models. So gamification is not just for kids. Uh, you can have a gamified course or a gamified training initiative 
for all sorts of profiles, not just kids, not just youngsters, okay? Gamification doesn't need heavy graphics to engage users. Uh, and again, I think this is an important thing for us to think about. Many people associate gamification with beautiful images or very sophisticated websites, very sophisticated technology. Uh, again, maybe your gamified model will have very sophisticated technology, uh, very interesting graphics, whatever. But again, you can do it in a different way. It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't work for everyone. <laughs> uh, this is a little controversial, but some people are really against gamification because they think that it works in the beginning, but then it stops working. Uh, we're not going to talk about this now, but this is something for us to think about. Gamification is not this magic pill that will make something that is boring 100% interesting out of the blue. <laughs> some people will dig it, some people will not. So uh, when you design gamified courses or lessons, uh, take this into account. It's not just this one size fits all solution uh, or something that will happen uh, at work, that will work no matter what. And finally, it's not something that requires a huge number of resources. Again, you can have a gamified lesson or a gamified course without investing a lot of money, a lot of time. Uh, so that's something for us to think about. So far, so good. Can you type in the chat if so far things make sense? Yes. That's great. I'd like to see you guys. It's so weird talking to no one and just seeing messages. But I hope you're there. Thank you for being here with us. <laughs> So we've talked about what gamification is not. So let me show you our objectives then. Uh, by the end of this webinar, we should all have a better understanding of what gamification means, why it has become so popular, and how to incorporate it into our lessons and courses. So there are basically three parts. And I hope to have time to discuss questions that you uh, may have, feel free to ask your questions during the webinar. I can see the questions here and I will, I can select some of them to, to discuss uh, later, but I hope to have some time at the end of this webinar to discuss more questions uh, with everyone. All right, so gamification, where does this term come from? Any ideas? Can you post in the chat? Do you think this term was invented by educators? Do you think it was invented by scientists? Who invented the term gamification? Where does this term come from? Scientists, video games, companies, <laughs> IT. <laughs> so gamification, guys, as a term, and I'm reading the quote here, gamification as a term originated in the digital media industry. The first documented use dates back to 2008, but the term did not see widespread adoption before the second half of 2010. So I think I first heard about gamification in 2012. What about you? When did you first hear about gamification? And I hope it's not five minutes ago, but if it is, that's fine too. When did you first hear about gamification? Last year. <laughs> 2015, 16, right now. <laughs> That's cool, this year. Yeah, so again, people have been talking about gamification for a while, but I think uh, it's a term that is not really understood. And when people criticize gamification, when they say that it's just a gimmick uh, or they downplay the, the potential of gamification, I think it's more of a lack of understanding of what it entails. Maybe they're criticizing one model, but Again, we have different possibilities, and we're going to look at some of these possibilities uh, soon. Okay, so since video games are designed with the primary purpose of entertainment, and since they can demonstrably motivate users to engage with them with unparalleled intensity and duration, game elements should be able to make other non-game products and services more enjoyable and engaging as well. So this is basically the rationale behind gamification. How can I make something that is not interesting? Interesting. <laughs> How can I turn something that is boring, something that is not motivating, into something that is motivating, that is fun? Uh, so that's basically what people were thinking about when this term came up. 
Uh, and again, of course, this is something we can see in education, but I, I guess you can see this happening in other fields as well. If you think about uh, apps that you use on your phones, maybe some of the apps that you use already have some gamification elements. So uh, again, the concept comes from games, but the applicability goes much, uh, goes beyond this uh, field of ELT and games. It's actually something that is found in a variety of contexts. So if we had to define gamification, if it's not the use of games, if it's not uh, having fun in our lessons, what is gamification? We need a definition. The most common and the most, uh, I would say, the most, uh, the one that is referenced the most is the one that I'm showing you, which is that gamification is the use of game design elements in non-game contexts. Oops. So we are talking about game design elements in non-game contexts. A classroom is not a game context. If I have uh, game design elements inserted into a course or into a lesson, that's, uh, in a way, aligned with this definition. So thinking about this, thinking about the game design elements and thinking about non-game concepts, I think it's important for us to think about games and think about people that play games for a second. So I would like to work together with you. And again, I'm counting on your participation here. <laughs> so I have two questions first. Are all games the same and are all players the same? So based on your experience as a player or if you're a parent, based on the games that you see your children playing or if you're a, a teacher, based on the games that you see your students playing, are all games the same? And if so, why? And if not, why not? Are all players the same? So I can see lots of no's here. Mm, it depends on personality, style, different types. What types? Can you be a little more specific? What types of games do you know? So different. Some people are competitive. That's true. Different names. So board games, electronic card games, maybe the players are computers. <laughs> True. So I have another question then. Uh, you sort of this started talking about this, I guess, in the chat. If we think about gamer types, how many gamer types can you think of? Uh, you mentioned competitive players. OK, so some gamers are really competitive. But are there other types of players? And if so, what types of players can you think of? And if you think about the different types of players, what kind of experience do they look for in games? Uh, Claudia has just mentioned shy players, nerds. <laughs> what kind of experience do shy players want in a game? Do they want to win the game? Do they want to uh, make friends? What is their objective? So fun, entertainment, relaxation. OK, to overcome obstacles, maybe it's just a hobby, entertainment, showcase their potential, interact. Very nice. That's great. So many contributions here in the chat. Some people are more aggressive. That's interesting. We're going to uh, look at that in a second. And then maybe the hardest question of the bunch. <laughs> and I will give you maybe a little more time to think about it and post in the chat. So you have one minute now, guys. What game design elements can you think of? And here I'm talking about characteristics of games, features. For example, some games have experience points. So this would be a characteristic. So you have one minute. Go to the chat. What game design elements can you think of? Characteristics of games, not adjectives, but things that you usually find in a game. And again, if you're talking about different types of games, Maybe things that you would find in a particular type of game, not necessarily all types, but some types of games. I'll give you some time to think and participate, and then I will return our conversation. So some people have already started contributing here. So uh, some people mentioned rhythm, pace, characters badges, 
Rodrigo Queiroz has no idea. <laughs> so that's good, Rodrigo. That's fine. We're going to look at some game design elements soon. So after this webinar, let's hope that you have some idea. Narratives, that's interesting. Levels, challenges, awards, avatars, time, weapons, time restrictions, colors, cards, buttons, scores, different feelings, sensations, levels, participants, objectives, ranking, points, stars, interactivity. Wow, so many contributions. Critical moments. Res uh, oh, that's interesting. Respawn. Try again the mission. So if you fail, it's not game over necessarily. You can try again. That's interesting. Strategy. Context. Competition. Interaction. Trophies. Strategies. Rules. Layout. Wow, so many things, so many things. Thank you so much for your contributions. Solange doesn't like games. <laughs> many people don't like games, Solange, and that's fine. You don't have to like games. But maybe you haven't played the, game, the games that you would like. Uh, since there are so many different types of games, maybe you haven't found your type. Uh, but again, if, even if you don't like any types, that's totally fine. Uh, you can still be a teacher that uses gamification in spite of your lack of interest or your lack of motivation to play games yourself. Cool. So as you said, gamers look for different experiences, right? And this is something that we have to think about. Sometimes we think that we only have people that want to win. So their objective is to win. That's not necessarily true. Uh, people play games for a number of reasons, and here you can find some of them. I know that some words are really small, <laughs> so you're not expected to read everything and to understand everything here. Uh, but you can open this uh, presentation later and have a look. But uh, there are many words here that I think are totally true, right? Some people want the challenge. Some people want control. They want to finish something. They want to discover. They want to explore. They want to subvert. They want to relax. They want this fantasy. Uh, Again, if we think about the situation we're all living through, uh, games are a distraction, right? So escapism is part of the, the appeal, I would say. Sadism, yeah, that's true. That's true. Some people play games to punish others, right? To be cruel. Maybe they cannot be cruel in real life, so they use games to be cruel. Or maybe they are cruel in real life, and then they use games to be even more cruel than usual. So yeah, there are different types of games and different types of gamers. And this is something for us to, uh, to think about because uh, there are different gamer types, guys. Uh, sometimes as teachers, we sort of think, think gamers are all the same and they are not. Uh, I found when I was doing my research before this uh, webinar, I found a categorization that I found very helpful. So I wanted to share with you. According to this uh, source, and you can find the source here, and at the end, you will find all of the references. But according to this source, there are different types of gamers. There are basically four types of gamers. Can you guess what they are? So maybe in the chat, can you type your guesses? What types of games are, what types of gamers are there? We have four types here. For example, people that really want to win, people that really want to, uh, destroy other people. So people that want to make friends, maybe we're not talking about the same types of players, right? So competitive, this could be one. So this is the first one we remember, right? <laughs> what else? Socializing. Okay. Social gamers, right. Direct competition, creators, that's cool. That's true. Bad losers. Nelly Santana, you mentioned bad losers. That's true. I think this should be a category. The backseat gamer. Hmm, interesting. Thinkers. Hi, Sylvia. <laughs> I didn't see you there. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for being here. Status. That's cool. So according to this uh, source, there are four types. We have killers. We have achievers, we have socializers, as you mentioned, and we have explorers. 
So you may look at the symbols here. The different suits will tell you the types uh, here, right? So here, if we start with this suit here, we are talking about achievers. So achievers, they basically want to attain status and they want to achieve goals. <laughs> That's obvious, right? Now that we think about it. In terms of what they do in a game, they win, they challenge other people, they compare results. So are you are you about to win? Because I'm winning. So they are thinking about their performance, but they want to win. They want to be number one. Do you know any person that fits this description? Are you an achiever when you play games? Or do you know students who are achievers? Or does your son or does your daughter have this profile? Many students, <laughs> many. Yeah, me. So many people are achievers. They care about the results. They care about their performance. Uh, but then we have a distinction. When we look at the last one, we're going to see an unhealthy version of this. If you are an achiever, you are uh, worried about winning, but in a way, you're doing it in a healthy way. <laughs> when we go to this last category here, when we talk about killers, then the situation is a little different. But anyway, the second type here has to do with explorers. So again, uh, what, what do they do, right? What do they focus on? Well, they focus on exploring, duh, and they want to discover the unknown. So when there is this mystery, something that they don't know, that they want to learn, this is something that motivates uh, explorers when they play games. And inside games, they like investigating, they like creating, which was, which was something mentioned in the chat. They like discovering things. So you may have clues, you may have uh, pieces of information that need to be put together to uh, achieve something. So here we have explorers. So same question, do you see yourself as an explorer when you're playing some games? Do you know people who are explorers? Are explorers the minority, the, my, the majority, or what do you think? A bit, yes. I asked a lot of questions, so I don't know if yes is yes, you are an explorer. Yes, there are many explorers. Yes, they are the majority. Yes, they are the minority. <laughs> so some people are saying that they are not a majority. Some people are explorers like Ricardo, Thiago. That's cool. So again, you can be all types, which is the beautiful thing, right? It depends on the game. If you're playing one type of game, you can be an achiever. If you're playing a different type of game, you can be uh, an explorer. And then we have, oops. Ooh. And then we have the next type here. We have socializers. Uh, so socializers, as the name suggests, they socialize. They like networking, making friends, getting to know people with similar interests. Uh, there are a lot of game communities, guys. If you are interested in games, you probably know this. And if you're not, I'm telling you, people that play the same game, uh, many, in many cases, they become best friends because they have the similar interests. Then they have this online community, which can be a little unhealthy at times, but uh, still they can find people with similar interests and make friends. So this is something for us to think about. So when they play games, they like sharing, they like commenting, they like helping people. Let that sink in. We have players that like helping people. So whenever I think about gamified courses or gamified uh, lessons, I don't think about help. I think about competition. So this is something for us to reflect upon. Uh, maybe I can have a gamified course or a gamified lesson in which help is being prioritized and not competition. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just me. Maybe I'm crazy and this sounds obvious to you. Of course, my gamified lesson or my gamified course has this element. But in many cases, I see lots of competitions, lots of points, lots of rankings, and I don't see this element. Some people really like sharing, commenting, and helping others. Uh, so don't forget about that when you are thinking about how you can gamify your courses. And finally, we have the killers. As I said, the last, let's say, desirable <laughs> version of the achievers. They want to win. They want ranks. They want this direct competition. But they also want to win at all costs. So no matter how it is that I'm going to win, that's what I'm going to do it. So I'm going to hack. 
I'm going to cheat. If you lose, I'm going to hackle you. I'm going to distract you. This is just about winning. <laughs> Blood in the eyes. <laughs> so now let's have this free open space. No judgment, guys. No, uh, you can open your heart. Have you ever been a killer when you were playing a game? It's OK. You can just post this in the chat. No one will, ju will judge you all the time. <laughs> So Thiago is the killer. Thiago, you're part of the problem. Don't be part of the problem, Thiago. So some people there are not killers. That's good. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> so Marcia said she's never cheated or hacked. That's good. That's good. Don't do it. Don't do it. So uh, again, I thought this was interesting because, uh, as I said, we tend to generalize. We tend to think that gamers are all the same. People that like games or people that play FIFA or that play Call of Duty or that play Minecraft. That's true, but there are many different types of games and people may play different games because they uh, have different preferences. Or, and this is interesting, they may play the same game in a different way. Lots of people play Minecraft, for example, and I'm not sure if you're one of them or if you know a lot about Minecraft, but people play Minecraft for hundreds of reasons, and the reasons may be very different. Maybe they are playing because they want to be creative. Maybe they're playing because they like this YouTuber, so that's one way to connect with the YouTuber. Maybe they are playing because whatever. It relaxes them. People are different. They play for different reasons, right? Uh, there is a question here. That's an interesting question. Let me show it. So how should a teacher deal with these different types of players in the classroom? I think that's a very, very interesting question. Uh, and I don't have a clear answer because I don't believe I'm in a place to say how you should or shouldn't do things. However, I think that when you design your uh, courses or your lessons, you should not prioritize or give a lot of space for killers. <laughs> there will be killers. Killers exist. Maybe Thiago will be part of your group or someone like him. But your activities or your games or your gamified course or your gamified lesson, whatever, uh, should allow for cooperation, should allow for uh, celebration of not just my achievement as a player, but collective achievements, right? So uh, first, I think the first part to answer your question, maybe the first part is to identify what types of players you have and maybe a questionnaire, maybe a uh, needs analysis moment could be something that you can do. So identifying the types of personalities and the types of gamers that you have in your groups. And then based on that, designing appropriate things. But we're going to look at that later. More questions, more questions, more questions. So I find hard, I find it hard to work with games in a big group of students. What do you think? Uh, this is something for you to consider, uh, not just in terms of how to gamify lessons or gamify courses, but in any type of decision that you have to make in the classroom, right? The number of students will make a difference. And now we're thinking about online teaching as well. So teaching online, and using games or gamified um, material online is different from what would happen in real life. So I don't have the answers right now, but I think that's a very important question for us to think about. There is another one here, using gamification with the elderly. That's a great question. So maybe at the end of the webinar, we can go back and discuss uh, some of them, all right? Just so we have more time to look at the how part. We've been talking about the what a lot, maybe the why, but not the how. So let's uh, look at the how, and then we can return to some of the questions uh, and explore all of them or uh, some of them, at least. Cool. So we've been talking, as I said, about the what. Check. Gamification is the use of game elements in non-game contexts. I think we get it. We looked at the why. OK, so people want to make things that are not fun, fun. They want to make things that are less engaging, more engaging. I think we get why. But the how part is a little confusing. So I think we should invest in looking at how we can gamify things. Uh, earlier, I asked you to think about game design elements. And you gave me lots of interesting suggestions, many of which are here. 
So if we think about game design elements, we can think about different levels. One level has to do with interface and interface design patterns. So here we have badges, we have leaderboards, we have levels. Uh, again, if you're not really familiar with many games, let me explain this briefly. So badges uh, basically show you that you have achieved something. So if you have explored 100% of the game, you get this badge or this achievement saying that you have done it. And in many games, uh, they will tell you that only 5% of players have uh, achieved this, or only 5% of players have the same badge. So in a way, this makes you very special or that wants to make you <laughs> feel special. So uh, those achievements, those in-game achievements, uh, they will have or they will lead to badges uh, that sort of symbolize what you have achieved. Leaderboards, I think, are self-explanatory, right? Uh, we have number one, number two, number three, rankings. And again, this is great for achievers, maybe for killers, but for socializers, maybe that's not the most interesting thing. Uh, and then we have the level part. This will be something we will look at in a second, but uh, when we think about gamifying courses or lessons, I think the vocabulary that you use is very important. Uh, it might sound silly, but using the word level instead of exercise. So exercise one, exercise two. Now we have level one, level two. This difference in vocabulary might be or might lead to a changing mindset. So levels are usually progressive in the sense that level one is easier than level two. Uh, but again, the vocabulary itself is something for us to think about. Here, in terms of game design patterns and mechanics, we have uh, time constraints. So if you're playing a game, there is this pressure. You don't have all the time in the world. You need to make a decision. Uh, not in all games, <laughs> but in many games, that's the case. Uh, Minecraft, no time constraints. You can play for hours and hours and hours, and that's fine. But for many games, uh, you have time constraints. So if teachers want to gamify courses, maybe that's something that they can incorporate. Uh, so instead of giving students all the time in the world to do something or decide something, you give them a limited amount of time. Uh, and time is just one of the examples. They also have limited resources. So in games, good games, you have to make decisions. And sometimes your decisions are hard. Uh, if you have played games such as uh, The Walking Dead, for example, you only have one small piece of bread. So who are you going to feed? Are you going to feed person A or person B? And if you feed person A, person B dies. Deal with this decision. So the resources are limited. Uh, so you have to make the best use of the resources. And sometimes these resources uh, can be time, right? Time related, but sometimes there are other types of resources. But this is something for us to think about when trying to gamify courses or lessons, giving students uh, the necessity there to make choices because they will need to make a choice given that there are limited resources. And finally, turns, right? So uh, again, not all games have turns, but in many games we do have them. So now it's my turn, I have to, my turn, I have to do something. Now it's your turn, you have to uh, take what I did into account and make your decision. So uh, depending on how people want to gamify courses or lessons or materials, this is something they can do. Finally, we have broader principles here. Uh, games are not, or many games are not supposedly supposed to be finished very quickly, right? We have this enduring play. Uh, there are games that I have played for years. <laughs> so it's the same game, but I'm still playing it. And maybe many people feel the same way. They don't stop playing. Uh, they have new objectives or they give themselves new challenges and they keep playing. So Skyrim is an example, Monopoly, that's true. So again, if we think about this in the classroom context, how can we make sure that students want to go back to this activity or that they want to go back to a course or to a set of uh, materials. So uh, this is a characteristic that people want to include in gamified materials. And it's hard, right? But this, this is an objective. 
Uh, in terms of objectives, this is also a principle of games. Games have clear goals. Not all of them. Game, Minecraft, not so much. <laughs> but many games have clear goals. So you're playing this game because you want to achieve A, you want to achieve B, you want to achieve C. Uh, so if you're gamifying things, make sure that you think about the goals and that these goals are not just something that you know as a teacher or that you know as a course designer, but that your students know and want. Because if it's a goal that they don't want, if it's a goal that they are not interested in, length of the game, that's true. So there is a question in the chat there about the length of the game. I guess this has to do with the first element here. Uh, they want to, you want them to keep playing, but the length of the game will change, right? There are very long games and very short games. But even uh, long games, they need to have variety, guys. Uh, and I think that when people criticize gamification, they say that gamification doesn't work or that it's just a gimmick, they forget that variety is key. So if you always want to gamify things in the same way, it's boring. Your students will like it the first week, the second week, the eh, boring. Because games are not like that. Games change. If a game is repetitive, oh, that's a bad game. I'll find a different one. Uh, you like games that give you variety. Maybe you are doing similar things, but something has changed. And this, this thing that has changed will make a big, big difference because games need to be interesting and they remain interesting if there is variety. If there is no variety, they get boring very fast. And here I'm talking about games, but if we transpose this and think about gamified lessons or courses, these lessons or these courses will get boring very, very quickly. Uh, there are other questions here. Uh, again, I don't want to spend a lot of time discussing the questions right now because we're, we're going to have a slot, I hope, at the end of the webinar. But do you recommend older, uh, longer games for older students? Again, I'm not talking about using games. Uh, this webinar is not about using games. So I'm not suggesting that you use games. I'm suggesting that you think about the characteristics of games and that you use the same characteristics in your lessons or courses. So in this case, we are not really talking about recommending games or using games. This would be a different webinar, a different discussion. This is more about game-based learning and not gamification. Another question here has to do with Quizlet. Uh, we're going to talk about Quizlet soon. So uh, hold that thought. We're going to look at Quizlet in a second. So I, like, I know that people like formulas. They want to, OK, this is all nice. This is all good. But give me something I can apply. <laughs> give me something that I can use. So I found something in the literature that I can uh, share with you and I think is helpful. So as a teacher, you need to think about, one, what is your objective? So you choose your objectives. Let's say that your objective is to reduce the use of Portuguese in the classroom. You want your students to use English in the classroom and English only. This is just an example, OK? So let's use this example throughout here. But you could have different objectives. Uh, then based on this objective, you award points. So if you follow what is expected, I'm giving you experience points. And this is something, remember the thing about vocabulary, I'm not saying very good, I'm giving you experience points. And then, yeah, this is not actually in order, right? But the third one has to do with a common interest and a theme. A game works and a gamified course works if there is a theme. So uh, I would encourage you guys to do some research or do some needs analysis with your students or if you are a coordinator with the students uh, that go to your school because you need to identify things that they like or things they are interested in. For instance, let's say they are interested in superheroes or comic books or, I don't know, geek culture. Then your whole course or your whole lesson, if you're thinking about different levels, will have the, uh, this, uh, this specific theme. Because if there is no theme, then it's boring. <laughs> it's again, uh, it's as if you were trying to make something that is boring look fun. And students can see when you're doing that. Uh, the lesson is very boring. And all of a sudden, guys, let's play a game. Let's do something fun. It's not natural. So if you really want their experience to be gamified, think about a theme for the lesson. And if possible, a theme 
for the course. So everything is integrated. So this is an important part of the formula. Another important part of the formula has to do with the visible record of progress. And here, uh, the author is talking about the criteria for acquiring points, powers, must be transparent, where I am must be transparent. So uh, am I, where am I in this journey? Am I, uh, am I level one? Am I level five? Am I level 10? How do I get to the next level? So this, this sort of thing is very important, uh, according to some authors. Uh, but, again, thinking about the different types of players, maybe you don't want to make this visible record of progress something that will lead to bullying, that will lead to uh, prejudice, that will lead to hackling, etc. So, depending on your group, this could be collective, right? So, as a group, we have one character, for example. So, your contribution will help our character, but everybody has the same character. So this character is making progress. Our character, the character that represents our uh, group, is now level two. But if we do our part, next lesson, it will be level three and then level four. So this is a possible adaptation that you can make if you are worried about uh, putting some students uh, on the spot or making some people uncomfortable. But it's very, very, very important that they understand where they are, how they can improve, and again, thinking about the vocabulary, points, powers, these things matter. So what are the game elements in this formula here? We are talking about experience points that are exchanged for rewards, and then going to the next one, rewards. Uh, this is something that I want to discuss very quickly, but it's an important thing. Sometimes we think that rewards could be what the student wants necessarily. For example, if you do this, if you play this game, if you have good results, you can use your phone at the end of the lesson. Uh, one that's not really something that, I don't know, is aligned with what we believe in as educators. But in addition to that, it's not aligned with the gamified model itself. So if you think about rewards, think about how the rewards are connected to the theme and think about how the reward will enhance learning. Because don't forget, guys, this is all about learning. <laughs> we want to make learning more successful. If the reward is not something that will enhance learning or enhance increased motivation, then it's not a good reward. Uh, the reward is that you don't have to do your homework. What kind of reward is that? Maybe the reward is that you choose the homework that you will do. So the reward is choice, for example. This is, I think, more aligned with what we believe in as educators, or at least what I believe in as, a, as an educator. And finally, we have powers. So powers, powers sort of give this fun element. So once you reach level five, you can do your experience points are doubled. Once you reach level seven, you can choose three things or you can choose three moments in the lesson to do whatever. So the powers, once again, should be aligned with the theme and they should be aligned with what you believe in as an educator so that the powers and the rewards enhance learning rather than uh, distract the student from learning as you think should happen. Uh, I want to give you a real example. So this example comes from the source that you can see at the bottom. I'll give you maybe one minute, a minute and a half for you to look at this example, and then we'll talk about it very briefly together. So individually, look at the example, please. So as soon as you have finished reading, just say yes in the chat, and then we can uh, we can continue. Okay, so many people have finished. So as you can see, this happened in, J in Japan. It's a real uh, experimentation. And you may, you may think that this is great or terrible. That's not the point. We are not judging 
uh, the use that this teacher made, but it's a real use. And this was uh, done back in 2012, so some years ago. Uh, in any case, so this project was conducted at a private university in Japan. Uh, everybody had characters, so this is an important thing, right? Uh, characters are part of games, so if I want to gamify my course, or in this case, the project that this person was conducting, there were characters there. Uh, we had group and solo. Oh, just going back to characters. Again, thinking about not feeling exposed, it's not my name that is number one, it's my character. So maybe this could be uh, a little more, uh, I don't know, a, a little less intimidating or a little less uh, offensive to some people. So it's not that I'm the last person there, it's that my character is there. If you really think that leaderboards are interesting or necessary, consider having characters at least. But in any case, uh, this teacher had solo and group quests. Look, it's not a lesson, it's not an activity, it's not an exercise, we have quests. So the vocabulary choice is essential. Uh, and then their objective was not to pass the course. <laughs> their objective was to get to level 12 or more. So this is essential. And then in terms of rewards for leveling, uh, leveling up, uh, this is also aligned with what we saw earlier. So here we have a sort of formula, and here we have an example of how this formula could happen in real life. There are many different possibilities. This is just one possibility that I want to share with you because I found this in the article. But again, guys, we've been talking about the how part, and I showed you a formula, but maybe you want more than a formula. Maybe you want tools. Uh, I made a informed, an informed decision not to give you uh, practical tips in terms of online tools, and I will explain that in a second. But in any case, you can open this presentation later. Yes, you're going to have the slides later. You can open this presentation later, and you can explore, uh, for example, in terms of classroom management, this could be chaotic. How do I know which student is level whatever? Uh, how do I give students experience points? Do I have to do this from scratch? Do I have to create a website? How do I do this? Uh, there are websites and services that can do that for you. So Class Dojo, Class Craft, you may want to explore them later. Again, I'm not going to uh, teach you how to do this. I trust your ability to look at this presentation, look at uh, YouTube videos, tutorials, and learn that autonomously. In terms of gamified quizzes, uh, you can turn activities from the course book into something a little more fun, right? Uh, it's still thinking about the learning that is happening. So you can use Quizlet, you can use Kahoot, quizzes, Word Wall. There are many possibilities here. And these are just some of them. There are many others. And then uh, I think you can find excellent ideas, guys, if you use and if you look at EdTech blogs. There are great blogs. Uh, the one that I love the most is Ditch That Textbook. If you don't know this blog, uh, Google it right now because it's a great blog with fantastic ideas, and there are many others. But this is just one example that I wanted to share with you. I decided not to focus on specific tools and specific services for two reasons, one of which is that you had a very recent webinar with Ivan Takaki, a colleague of mine, about how to use Quizlet and other services. Have you watched this webinar? Can you type in the chat, yes or no? Uh, it's available if you go to uh, Gizal's YouTube channel, you can find it. So we have lots of practical tips there. It's a different type of webinar. So I didn't want to do the same thing. So it's, again, about gamification, it's the same thing. No, it was different. And I hope you felt that it was different. <laughs> so if you want more practical uh, tips in terms of tools that you can use, maybe this webinar can give you some of these ideas. But the second reason, guys, is that this does not matter, or this is not what matters most. What matters most is your mindset. So gamification is all about your mindset. You can use Quizlet, you can use Classcraft, you can use everything. If you don't have the right mindset, if the experience is not seen as fun, and if your students are not having fun, that doesn't really work. Uh, so. Uh, my recommendation is that you don't focus too much on specific services, specific uh, apps, because technology changes a lot. 
maybe you are watching this webinar in the future. And if you are in the future, let's hope coronavirus is not a problem anymore. But if you're watching this one year from now, two years from now, three years from now, maybe some of these services will not exist. Maybe some of these services will be dated. The thing that matters is not the service. The thing that matters is your mindset. So a service, an app, a blog, this is just something that you can use to get ideas, but it's all about your mindset. So this webinar had three objectives, what gamification means, why it's popular, how to incorporate it. Uh, I hope I was able to cover some of these things. Our time is limited, so uh, some questions were not covered. Maybe we can look at them now. We have four minutes, so this will be, have to be done very, very quickly. Uh, but if you have a different question, post in the chat. I will look at some of the questions that were not answered before. Uh, some people said that, OK, wait. Some people were talking about private lessons. Where was this question? If I can use it, if I'm to, uh, teaching one on one, let's see if I can find it. Okay, so this was the question. And one to one class, uh, of course, you can gamify uh, this type of lesson, but you need to know whether your student wants that, right? So uh, gamification is trying to solve a problem. So if you see a lack of engagement, maybe you can experiment with gamification. And gamification in that case could be about. Uh, instead of having lessons, having levels, instead of having uh, exercises in the course book, you have quizzes that are more fun. There are many other things that you can use, uh, but this is all about what the learner needs. So this is uh, the same question, right? Private students. So I think this is important. Uh, some people mentioned here blended learning. Uh, so totally, if you're doing blended learning, uh, could be a very important part of this online component, the components, components that is not synchronous. So that's great. And variety is key. If you always use the same thing, if you always use the same tools, uh, this will be boring. This will not be effective. Uh, again, you're going to have access to the slides, so don't worry. You can find everything later, and I'll show you how in a second. What else? What else? What else? There was something here about online games. So it was not a question. It was just a comment. Thank you for your comment. <laughs> uh, I'm very experienced. Is it possible to use with all contacts? I'm not sure I'm very experienced, but thank you. Use with all contacts and content? Well, maybe. But uh, again, it's all about your group. You need to know who you're using it with. Uh, some people have used gamification, for example, instead or in addition to uh, training initiatives. Instead of having employees come for a training session, whatever, they have gamified platforms. And that could be a huge success or a huge flop. So I don't think there is a one-size-fits-all solution, but it's something for you to think about. Uh, if you see the need to change things or to add an element of fun, uh, maybe just using a game is not the way to go, but instead gamifying their whole experience. I promised that I would give you the references. So the references are here. I would encourage you to look at these articles or these books. Uh, there are many other things. Uh, I had to be selective. There are excellent videos, excellent websites. But again, I just wanted to have uh, some interesting references that you can look at later. Some people are asking where you can find the, uh, the slides. I will tell you that in a second. But first, let me tell you that you can learn more about how to teach online. You mentioned blended learning, right? So right now, Couture Inglesa, Faculdade de Couture Inglesa is offering a course about teaching online for free. So if you're interested, just go to their website and show that you're interested and you receive more information. Let me give you the link so that you can go there if you're interested, learn more about the course, learn more about teaching online using uh, other materials. So the link is there. Just a second, click here. Wait, it's not there. <laughs> it will be there soon. So just one second. 
Okay, so I think the link is there now. So you can go to the website, faculdadeculturainglesa.com.br, learn more about the course, learn more about teaching online. Uh, also, to find the presentation, you can go to this website at the bottom. Uh, I have to stop using the cursor. Okay, so the website is gg.gg slash Rafael Rodriguez. This is the blog that I created I think earlier this week, and I hope we'll be alive for years. Uh, the post is not there, but give me five minutes. When this webinar is concluded, I will post the link to this presentation there. And again, if you're watching this in the future, uh, just go back to May 29th, and you will find this presentation. And let's hope the, the website is very active in the future, because I've just started, and I hope to keep this alive with more tips and more materials. Guys, I think that's it. I don't want to keep you after our time. I would like to thank you again for your uh, amazing participation. I really liked uh, the experience of interacting with you. I really prefer experiences face-to-face, -face, but uh, I think that's what we can do at the moment, right? So thank you so much. If you want to find this presentation and if you want to find uh, other materials, you can go to the link that I will include at the top. So it's gg.gg at, I'm sorry, gg.gg slash Rafael Rodriguez. You will find uh, a link to this presentation soon and other tips in the future, right? Thank you so much. Bye-bye. And if you're watching this in the future, let's hope for the best, guys. Let's hope the future is better than the situation right now. No more coronavirus, no more crisis, and everything is fine. If you're watching this right now, thank you so much. I really liked it. I hope you had a good experience too. Bye-bye.